Okay, y'all people. Um, I didn't really like what was going on last night. So I took a uh, time out to write up a, a, a diagram for people to understand. Like some people got to be retaught. And you might not like some of the things that I say, but I am going to give you the truth on however that I see it. Because I'm able to connect a little bit more dots than those who have not taken anatomy classes, physiology classes, and doesn't, you know, pretty much know the roundabouts of this medical language. So let me get into it because I put a limitation on breastfeeding. And I guess that like sparks so much attention. Like it made people mad and look at me a little bit different. But hey. I got to study all different systems, all different mechanisms, and I have to understand the whole body as a whole unit. So I'm trying to help people cure up breast cancer, overstand the, um, the lactation issue when you don't understand when somebody has uh, uh, too much prolactin and then can't even release it with oxytocin. So let's understand a little bit further on what's going on with breast milk. We know that it's very nourishing. You know, we, we know that it's you know, that's what we're supposed to have when we're infant, when we're a newborn. We also know that breast milk contains uh, antibodies because the baby can't make it itself. So it boosts up the immune system. So this is the nutrient. This is the nutrient source of the baby for the first six months of his life. But within the first three days, it's producing what they call colostrum. And colostrum is being secreted uh, just not so much of it. It's about the about a good, maybe five ounces of uh, of colostrum that's there for the first three days. That's why your baby loses weight within the first three days. Before we get into the mechanism, before we get into the mechanism, because I took the time out to draw this, we need to get oriented with the anatomy of the breast. So both male and female have breasts. We have mammary glands. So they're basically like little modified sweat glands that are able to produce some milk. But during puberty, males don't get developed. Females get matured and developed. So we want to understand that a huge percentage of that breast, that mammary gland, is not um, part of the adipose tissues and all the rest of that. It's not part of the whole weight of the breast. Really, when the woman becomes pregnant, that's when those mammary glands like to expand, engorge, and they can make milk by a hormone called prolactin, which produces the milk. Now, we're going to get into where the mammary glands are. The mammary glands are like larvals. They produce the milk during pregnancy and during breastfeeding. These larvals are encased with this little net-like film around it and they are able to contract and constrict and push against the gland so it can push the milk into these little bitty ducts. These little ducts called lactiferous ducts. Now these lactiferous ducts are able to go towards the nipple. This is how the outlet of the nipple comes. It has these little microscopic, you can't even see the little pores that's inside of the nipples but they are there, that's how it comes out. Um, but around it, this is the mechanism po most people don't understand. Around it, there's this aureola. Aureola is that dark circular uh, area that's around the nipple. But inside of the aureola, there's these little bumps inside of it. And those little bumps are called uh, Montgomery glands. And any gland that you know always secretes some type of fluid. And this fluid is what they call a um, lipoid fluid. Lipoid fluid is there to moisturize the nipple so it doesn't become dry, so it does not become cracked. Um, it is there also, and research studies, they found that this lipoid fluid is secreting a scent, uh, like a mild little odor that the baby is attracted to. That's how they're able to find a nutrient source. So, you know, the baby's eyes are, in the first three days are not so clear. They don't see all of that. It's kind of blurry. So they need to be able to locate this through a target. So they see the little bumps and they see the, the, the nipple and that fluid actually attracts them to the, the breast. Okay. So up under this areola, we have this, uh, this fibrous tissue. Now the fibrous tissue is what you know, makes the breast feel firm. 
Uh, it gives it its uh, firm feeling. Uh, but then we know that during pregnancy, 86% of that breast weight is off because of the glands, the fatty tissues is there, and it becomes really, really heavy. So we need a support, a, a suspensory ligament that can keep that breast anchored. And we call that ligament, ligaments of Cooper. And I know about that by the, uh, the little purple uh, ligaments that are there to help hold it up. Now, I, I've developed a, a product because um, they just asked me about saggy breasts. That's, they asked me about everything. So um, I'm able to teach on these type of things. I'm able to find a different type of herbs that help ligaments like this be able to give that strength back to the breast to feel back full again. I just want to introduce it to you. Um, 100% 100% uh, Peraria Marifica um, and I'm also using some fenugreek seed that I have to give you and it's good for it's good for actually um, producing more milk also because the fenugreek seed actually helps with lactation so we know what happens during lactation or do we? okay we have to get into that because this is where people thought that I was saying something wrong they really thought I was saying something wrong. So we got sensory neurons when the baby's suckling on the nipple. So the baby's creating the stimulation and all of the sensory neurons are going to the spinal cord, going up the brain and to the hypothalamus that is here. And then the hypothalamus sends a signal to the posterior pituitary gland. And the posterior just simply means that it's sitting behind the uh, anterior so the posterior pituitary gland releases what they call oxytocin. It turns it on like a light switch. Oxytocin is responsible for contracting the uterus when there's child labor. It actually gets faster and faster and faster. It keeps contracting and it also releases out milk, out of the nipple. So this is how the baby actually gets the milk out. Now, after all of this contraction, contraction of milk producing, milk is produced by what they call prolactin. And prolactin has these uh, inhibiting hormones around it too that tells you other neurons to don't mess with the oxytocin because it's time to feed. So you gotta understand that prolactin inhibiting hormone is also at the same time that the oxytocin is being released, it is also being uh, triggered by the anterior pituitary gland to turn off because it cannot do it at the same time. It is a, a switch on and switch off mechanism. There's no type of feedback loop here. It basically tells those mammary glands to not contract. It's not time to produce the milk right now. We have to turn off because the baby is suckling to produce oxytocin. Understand that prolactin has inhibiting hormones around it so that means alternatively it touches the limbic system the limbic system sits on top of the hypothalamus that means it's emotional limbic system controls all of your emotions um, I talked to that about that in previous videos but we know that all these different things are going on. We know these hormones are uh, estrogen, progesterone, progesterone is, is getting you ready for pregnancy um, and we didn't touch so much on the estrogen part of it because we know about breast cancer and all those different things. You know, there's the estrogen likes to mess with the breast cells. So because it, estrogen goes along with all of the fatty tissues, it loves the fatty tissue. This is where things start to divide cell division and things like that. And when those cell divisions, they start to multiply even more, they become tumor cells. And those, they like to sit in areas like the breast. So if you have a gene called BRCA1 uh, gene or BRCA2 gene, and you may be more susceptible to it, but everybody has this gene. It's just that when it replicates, do we have, a, do we have the right amount of nutrients? Nutrients is what makes these genes express differently. So this nutrient I'm talking about here, I get to go really, really deep into the thing of breast cancer and estrogen. I don't even supposed to be talking about all this, but there is a conversion with this methane. That's what it's called. It's called DIM. 
And that's produced in most of the cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the Brussels sprouts, the kale, all of the cabbage and all those things because they are rich in what they have this um, endo 3 carbonyl and sulforaphane, which protects the body from all type of cancers. And when you do have a cancer or a tumor cell, you want to be able to drain it from the auxiliary lymph nodes because those are the lymph nodes that keeps the body fighting the infections. It's right here, right here in the auxiliary pectoris muscle up in every, everywhere right there. But um, we need to know, we need to know. Estradiol, there's three different estrogens. Um, you got estradiol, estrone, est estrol, all these different ones that um, take place during puberty. So the one that's most dangerous is the estradiol. Uh, I, I guess I'll go a little bit into it, but, and then the one, this estradiol is the one that makes the body changes and makes all of the um, things pop out like they're supposed to pop out. Um, but also those things are like um, cancer promoting. So we gotta recognize that uh, when we're consuming things that, that are very estrogenic, like the xenoestrogens, the parabens, the benzothionols, these are things that are like environmental inhibitors, I mean environmental um, estrogens that that basically proliferate estrogen, estrogenic um, cancer, uh, carcinogenic cancers inside of the breast cells. So we, uh, I'm not going to go so much into it, I'm getting a little distracted from other things, but I need you guys to know that if when you know the anatomy, the mechanisms of all this, here it is, plain as day. Thank you guys for listening. Um, I'm your brother Ross and I see Shalom. If you have any questions, please find a way to contact me. Shalom Health Services is right there available for you. Uh, right there on Facebook, Shalom, uh, Ross and I see Shalom. You can find everything right there. Thank you guys. God bless.